nick and, and gained the nickname Saber Slayer. And, and of course, in its solo format, we're so used to seeing it as a dual aircraft, but of course, they, in the Pakistan, it was a solo. It, they didn't, you know, it was predominantly used as a solo uh, seat fighter. Yeah, it was an armed, it was an armed yeah. single seat fighter yeah. with guns and was also capable of, uh, of carrying rockets. And we're actually trying to acquire one now as our next project. So in the next few years, you should see a NAT F1 fighter joining the, uh, the trainers on the display circuit. Oh. An evocation there of the RAF of yesteryear, the NAT landing as the Vulcan taxis out. It's something of an historic segment of this display here at Waddington. And a brake shoot stream. Not quite deployed properly on Red Nat 1. We'll be having a word with the guys that pack that shoot. Of course, next year, the 50th display season of the Red Arrows, having been formed in 1965 from the Yellow Jacks, another NAT team. And I'm sure your aircraft will be much in demand for that. Yeah, so an aircraft you haven't seen yet, but we acquired a couple of years ago and it's been in a deep strip and rebuild. Uh, oh. again boys and girls as the aircraft top out at around two and a half thousand feet flying at 400 miles an hour. On the leader's right wing now is Fred 2, another of our first year pilots, that's Flight Lieutenant Ollie Parr. Ollie is another former Tornado GR4 pilot has also completed a tour as a Hawk flying instructor teaching advanced flying training to students at RAF and from us all at the Red Arrows. Thank you very much indeed, Squadron Leader Mike Ling. Absolutely superb display and how wonderful to see you back in a nine ship formation. Really, really top stuff. Don't worry, I see you've got lots to do. We'll hear more from you tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, how do you beat that? You can only beat it by one aircraft that we have here today. in just a moment. Well, it's a very special treat, uh, Ben, don't you think, having that following the Reds? Absolutely, of course, they've flown in formation.
going to go quite that high. I mean, that's terrific, uh, a terrific addition uh, to the display this year. And uh, indeed, that uh, commemoration we were discussing there with the very aircraft that uh, left at your uh, 45 degrees 607 there, uh, completing a 7,760-mile round trip with 18 air-to-air -air refuelings. Quite extraordinary. And captained by Martin Withers, who is on board XH558 with Bill Ramsey today. Amazing, isn't it? Still doing the same thing. Absolutely extraordinary. Well done. I don't know who's pulling the strings there, actually. <laughs> I suspect that is. We have uh, five pilots as part of the team. Uh, we share the pipeline amongst us. Uh, obviously, some of us have got uh, day jobs. And uh, today, it's uh, Bill Ramsey's turn to uh, be captain and fly. So Martin's acting in a supporting role. But Martin is obviously one of our captains also. Okay, there you have it, uh, from the very man that's going to be doing this very same thing tomorrow, and uh, I think you're looking forward to that already, aren't you, Kev? I am. I'm hoping the weather will be just as nice as it is today. Well, it's no surprise that uh, we mentioned that money is behind it, and indeed your support it to get this far has cost well in excess of £10 million, and uh, that included £2.7 million as a heritage uh, lottery grant. And uh, in order to keep the aircraft flying, well, of course, it uh, is going to require your help again. And that's where Project 2015 comes in. And uh, as a result of extensive research with uh, Cranfield Aerospace, and I know there's a very interesting leaflet available. Predominantly, it all starts with the leading edges, but there's an awful lot of work. But very luckily, they have an extension uh, on the engine hours, which will see it through to that period. Of course, once I understand, Kev, that once the engines are gone, they're gone virtually. Uh, that's, that's correct. Uh, the engines and the aircraft frame will probably uh, life out about the same time so we're serious, realistically looking at 2014-2015 uh, seasons uh, at the end of 2015 the aircraft will be grounded unfortunately as we see the aircraft now at the left with the wheels down uh, we're approaching the end of the display uh, Bill's going to raise the undercarriage shortly and uh, new for this season they'll be doing a 90 degree left turn onto the B axis uh, to depart and, uh, and then a final wing over left before he uh, comes back into that
spectacle now for those of you in the right position as XH558 comes in past XM607 to land. And as uh, Bill puts the aircraft gently on the ground, you'll notice he holds a nose wheel in the air. Uh, we call this aerodynamic braking. The uh, delta wing is a big air uh, wing and it also acts as an air brake. The wings here today in the hands of, I understand, uh, Lieutenant uh, Commander AJ Thompson. The unit from which he hails, 702 Naval Air Squadron, trains all the air and ground crew for the other Link Squadron in the Fleet Air, Arm 815 NAS, which is the frontline outfit. Now, I was going to say, not everybody will know what the Black Cats is. It's not just the emblem, you know, the squadron emblem, which is well known, and I'm sorry to cut you out there, but of course, Black Catting is an interesting pastime in the Royal Navy. Were you aware of that? Yes, I was. One-upmanship, I believe. Absolutely. So there we go. Sorry, Ben, do carry on. Well, I was just going to say that another role is to uh, provide refresher training to uh, pilots who've spent some time away from the Lynx community but are now returning. That's quite apart from feeding 815 Squadron with over a dozen air crew and over 100 maintainers a year. Trainees come to 702 from basic helicopter training on the Tri-Service Defence Helicopter Flying School at RAF Shawbury, or indeed, if they're training to be observers, from 750 Naval Air Squadron, which used to fly the jet stream. Now, as we've mentioned briefly earlier, they operate the new Beechcraft Avenger T1, an example of which you can see in the static park. 702 does a 12-month training course, and at the end of it, they know how to fly and fight in this very potent machine. A helicopter, of course, George, which holds a number of world records still to this day. 249 miles an hour, uh, just 26 years ago. It's never been broken since. In a Mark 1 Lynx, and quite a record to be beaten. So there we go. It was a great celebration. 40 years uh, of uh, Mr. Wesley and 25 years uh, of the World Speed Record. We had a great celebration here with them just last year. Yes, it's been a bit of a workhorse and uh, quite an export uh, record as well with this particular uh, aircraft. Uh, you may well see some interesting, I was talking about bobbing and heaving decks. There's a wonderful video on YouTube if you want to check it out uh, from the Danish Navy of them trying to put one of their links on the deck in the most horrendous storm. I suspect you've seen it. I have, yes, indeed. A wheeled undercarriage, of course, on the naval link as opposed to the skids of the links of the Army Air Corps, that is, apart from the Army's Mark 9, which also have wheels, and all the new Lynx Wildcats, which are coming into service, and that's the reason.